Hey guys. We'll get started. Um, welcome, Tucker. Tucker's sitting here appreciating the uh, threadbare nature of our of our program, but he was impressed that we are in fact a three camera shoot. What what the what the audience at home can't see is that all our cameras are sort of lashed to the walls with old belts and things like that. But but you know they look like ribbon belts, so it sort of keeps in the grow gain. Yeah, that's grow, very grow, yeah because uh, one of your friends sent me an an email that said uh, you know Tucker Tucker is a total preppy guy, but he's not really. Whatever that means, <laughs> it does okay. except you are going to Maine, so we can't, we can't, we can't believe that you're not. Not to not the really. fashionable part of Maine, I can promise you. Um, but anyway, welcome. Uh, how does it feel to be leaving Washington? It feels well. I love Washington. Well, I, I, know, I landed in Washington about an hour and fifteen minutes ago. From as, where? As, from California. Uh, California by way of the Midwest, and as the plane uh, makes the approach in a national, I'm always in a good mood. Really? I love. I, I am Washington's. One of its great defenders. Th this means you weren't coming in yesterday when the storms were no, happening. Then, no, right? thank God. <laughs> but you were wa you want to watch it as great defenders, but at the same time, um, you probably appreciate the need to get away from it to understand it better, though, right? I don't defend Washington between June fifteenth and September first. Do you think? How will you spend this summer, given everything that'll be going on? I, I commute from Maine. So you will be yes. You will be going from from the campaign to Maine. But it'll give you a completely different perspective, the right? Portland or will you be International here? Jet Port. <laughs> or will you be coming here? <laughs> no, I, where, where do you work out of now? Um, Mostly New York. No, here, right on the, the NBC bureau in Nebraska Avenue. Where have you been these five last? Five blocks. Where have you been house. these last few? I remember we were booking this. We were booking you appearing on this little program. I think it was two years ago, and then you just started your show. It could have been three years ago. Yes, you just three started years ago. your show. Um, with MSNBC. Did you actually pull up stakes and move up there, or did I, you commute? Yes. No, I was um, forced four almost at gunpoint. Yes, wife? we packed everybody and the dogs and the cat, the guinea pig, the rabbit, the goldfish uh, in the vehicle and drove to New Jersey for a year, nine months. Nine months. And yes. you lived in New Jersey? We lived in New Jersey, deep in the beating heart. Yes, in New Jersey. <laughs> and then, and then from there to where? Uh, back here. You brought them back here, and then all year was, was which, which show are we talking about? This was a show that's had about five iterations and at least But your as many first names. show was out of New Jersey. Right, it was out of New Jersey. And then your second show? Was out of New Jersey as well. And, and then, then you commuted? Probably about the fifth show I had, it was in, back you in brought Washington. It back it's down cable here. news, so the, you can the be half anywhere. life is, qu is quite short. <laughs> but it goes on on YouTube forever. Yes, yes, it you does, as I've learned YouTube. the hard way. I wonder if a person even wanted to get something off of YouTube if they could. Uh, but while we're talking about modern technology, Every time I do one of these shows, I enter, um, I enter whoever I'm about to interview for a Google alert. You all know about Google alerts, I'm sure. You can get, well, you, you enter the name in Google, and then any time that person's name is in the news, on your little PDA or your Ooh. desktop or your email, you'll get an alert about that person. And of all, of all the people I've recently interviewed, you far and away had the most Google alerts of anybody. <laughs> and they were all so utterly random. <laughs> they ranged from. Oh, let's don't, see. I see. I've never read a single word about myself online. They, so they, I don't you know, even there, know, there are people on the internet who claim otherwise. They claim that you read every word about yourself. So, <laughs> right. so they're wrong. They're are you wrong. kidding? <laughs> Do I look like a tortured soul? No, I actually, would be if I read that no, garbage. No. But but they ranged from. Uh, just so you know, they ranged from you um, being in a photo shoot with Chris Matthews where he had a meltdown. But you got in the story. Do you know what I'm talking about? I where have no he, idea. Where he apparently derided Ariana Huffington and did not want to be in any kind of photo with her. That story was brought to my attention by Ariana, who really who called me. Yes, quite early in the morning, um, in and her so, heavy Greek accent to try to explain. Tucker, I had no idea what she was talking about. What are you talking about? <laughs> did, did the story have any veracity? Did, did, did you know? It, Chris, have a meltdown? I think part of it was probably true. Part of it was untrue. Um, she the part read it, you witnessed was she true. She read it to me over the phone, and, and it quotes me saying, "I love alcohol" or something. Oh, well, that, that's right. I, in I, addition, right. in addition to um, Chris having a meltdown, you're talking about your big night out uh, drinking. I haven't had a drink in six years, uh, so I, <laughs> it goes without saying I did not say that. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Then there is more recently uh, that you were just in California at the Panetta conference. Yes. Where you're quoted as saying that you think that Barack Obama will be the next president. That's right. And you believe that? I, I think the I mean, odds are strong. I, I, I think the odds are strongly in his favor. I mean, I don't have an Obama bumper sticker on my Volvo, but I think, given the kind of year it is, 
um, the Democrat, whoever it, it, it is, and it looks like Obama now, if it was Dennis Kucinich, he'd have, I think, uh, he'd, be in a, he'd be in a good place to win. They just have a strong tailwind propelling them forward. Obama has raised three times as much as John McCain has. And you think, what, what part of that tailwind is money? Money is a lagging indicator, I think. I think we over money is a sort of handy metric for measuring something, but we don't pause often enough to figure out what. Yeah. And um, it it really money is what happens. Successful fundraising is what happens when you get really popular. Right. You don't get popular because you raise a lot of money. Um, a year ago, you would have said what? A year ago, I would have said Obama was likely to win. Really? Yes, I don't think Obama is this, the best situated this... to win. Because I think Hillary's a stronger candidate. You've been saying that. But, yeah. uh, well, I'm not saying, look, I would eat broken glass for voting for her. I'm not endorsing her. I'm just saying, personally, I th for a number of different reasons. One, she's tougher, obviously. She's the toughest person in the world. You've been, you've been saying that. Yes. You've been saying it in very artful and sometimes Right, not entirely flattering, ways. but it's true. And second, she is winning the voters you need to win in order to win a general election. His, look, Obama, But that's over, Tucker. It's, it's not over. It's, and, and it's not over. Here's why. Obama is, Obama's constituency is well known to everyone in Washington because Washington is ground zero in Obama land, um, <laughs> are by and large, not exclusively, but by and large, partisan Democrats who are going to vote Democrat no matter what. Yeah. Hillary is winning the people who are mostly Democrats, but on a certain kind of day might vote for a certain kind of Republican like John McCain, mm -hmm. right? So she's winning actually far more valuable voters, somewhat fewer than Obama, but the ones that make a bigger difference. Not real November. Democrats. Some are real Democrats, but they're, they're Democrats who could potentially be peeled off from their party. They don't have strong party ID. Do you, do, do you believe, well, let's, you know, we were joking earlier that we're, we're, we're taping this show before the weekend. It will yes. air, and Hillary is supposed to, um, and Hillary is supposed to appear on Saturday, and she is supposedly going to concede or suspend, or I don't know that they know the word they're going to use yet, but... Um, but we were joking about whether we should talk about this in real time or not, and we decided maybe we better because if we talked as if it had actually happened, we could end up looking silly. But there, there was a story just today that she, that her, that her uh, camp says she is um, not going to waive the right to have her name entered in, uh, at the at the uh, convention. Yes. So what what does that say if? She's suspending her campaign. <laughs> well, she's not going gently into that good night. There's no, there's really she, no doubt about that. You don't, you no. don't foresee that no, happening. No, she's in feral mode. She's what tough, uh, as, yeah, as I said a minute ago. Yes. And um, well, yes, you have used. And that and word. I say, uh, look, I say that with with genuine admiration. I mean, she's not going to be pushed around, and good for her. And by the way, again, I'm not saying this as a Hillary supporter by nature, but just as an observer of what's happened over the past year, I think she has absolutely earned a right to have influence in the party. Now, her who knows what her motives are? That's not for me to judge. I'm not a shrink or her priest or whatever. But you're a pundit. Yeah, but I try not to go to motive if I can help it. I, sometimes I fail and do it, but I try not to. <laughs> you can do it here if you want. But look, so who knows what her motives are? But I just think on the merits, she has earned a right to have influence. You've heard people on television over the past three days say, you don't bargain with a, with a presidential nominee. You have no leverage. Uh, actually, yes, you do. Because every campaign to some extent is a cult of personality. Both of them think that have it. And she has people who will come with her. Don't you think it's going to calm down a little bit and the landscape's going to change when it does calm down? No doubt. And how, how, how might that landscape most likely change? Well, most... Will her power diminish oh, as absolutely. things calm down? Oh, absolutely. And it'll diminish very soon. And most people who voted for Hillary and said they would never vote for Obama will, in the end, vote for Obama, of course. Because, because once it's laid on the table, if you are really a Democrat, right. you won't be able to vote and, for and John people McCain. are mad at Bush. That's exactly right. Most of them will. Not all of them will. Right. And our exit polling, which is, you know, not entirely accurate, but more accurate than most kinds of polling, suggests that, you know, somewhere between 40 and almost 50 percent of people who voted for Hillary in the last primaries aren't going to vote for Obama. They say they won't. Now, some of them are just saying that because they're angry, but some of them mean it. Yeah. And look, here's the headline that I think has been underlooked or ignored. Last 14 contests, Obama lost nine. I'm but, not taking, could, well, but then those who would uh, dis, those who would take you on about that would say, but look at what states they were. Yes, well, that, that's right. You know, You're right. right. I mean, and, and the Obama argument has been all along, well, those people are just bigots. 